Hello friends, so very good morning again to one and all present over there. So I Varnika welcome back you once again. We were learning about nothing but a beautiful topic that is X-ray. Isn't it beautiful? Why? Because this is a ray which can penetrate through our body. Yes, of course. It can penetrate through any opaque objects. And it has a great importance in medical also. Why I'm saying this? Because yes, if a doctor suggests you that your bone has been fractured, you have to do the x-ray of this bone. So that a ray will penetrate our body. Suppose this is my body and the ray will penetrate and it will detect all the defects that is present in my body. It will show on the screen what are the defects that I am having inside the bones. All right. So there is a great use of x-ray and scientist Rohenjian had found it accidentally. All right. So we have introduced about x-ray in the previous session. This time we were learning about the x-ray spectra. As I have promised you that we will be starting the session with the topic x-ray spectra. But before beginning the class, I would like you all to take a quick revision of what we have done in the previous session. All right. So first of all, what is an x-ray? I have told you that this process is just inverse of the photoelectric effect. We have begun our previous session with the same thing that what is the inverse of photoelectric effect? Is the inverse possible? Yes, it was possible. Where we have seen that kinetic energy of fast moving electron was partially or fully converted into the photon. All right. In the case of photoelectric effect, we had just seen the opposite process where the photon was getting released. Photon was just falling over the metal surface and electrons was releasing. This was just the opposite. And in the previous session, we had learned about the properties of X-rays. And also we have learned about the types of X-rays. That was soft X-rays and hard X-rays. What are the soft X-rays? The soft X-rays, the name given to the X-rays, a soft X-ray is given because they are having less penetrating power. And why less penetrating power? Because they are having less energy. Less energy, that means greater wavelength. So the order of wavelength of soft X-rays was 4 angstrom or above than that. All right. Now if I talk about the hard X-rays, hard X-rays, the name is clearly itself saying that this is hard in nature. That means it will be having high penetrating power. And now if I am saying that it is, it is having high penetrating power, that means kinetic energy of the electrons would be very much greater comparative to soft X-rays. And if I am saying that kinetic energy of the electron is greater, that means frequency is greater. And since frequency is greater, so wavelength would be less. Because frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional to each other. All right. So this was all the topic that we have covered in the previous session. And now we will start with the X-ray spectra. All right. So if I just talk about the X-ray spectra, there is something that we should learn before starting this very topic that is X-ray spectra. If I speak about the frequency and wavelength of the X-rays that are generating, then what will be? We have learned about the Coolidge X-ray tube in the previous class. The X-ray tube, I can just draw it again. Suppose here, all right, inside this, there is a metal surface. And here, there will be a filament. B 
beside this filament a cathode was connected so this is my cathode and cathode would be having negative charge so this is negative and this target surface would be positive so all right it is behaving as a node and it is behaving as a cathode the moment i will provide potential difference at this point the current would start flowing or i can say this filament would get heated when the filament get heated cathode rays would be started emitting from this point if i say that electrons are getting ejected from point these are electrons and the moment these electron will hit the surface of the target what will happen x rays are going to be generated say this is my x ray this x ray is going to be generated it means it is following the inverse process of photoelectric effect so what was the topic what should be the frequency and wavelength of the x ray that is being generated before starting this spectra i would just like to tell you the frequency and wavelength of x rays so first of all we know that kinetic energy of any electron or any material if any material that means a charge particle all right i am talking about some charge particle if the kinetic energy is existing in it how will the kinetic energy is provided suppose if potential is applied at this point so kinetic energy of the electrons that will be generating from this would be e into v where v will be the potential difference that would be applied across this battery that would be applied through this battery across this filament and e will be the charge of electron and also we know that kinetic energy equals to what half mv square this is both the relation of kinetic energy all right now one more thing we have to talk about frequency and wavelength we know that e equals to what e equals to h nu that means energy of the x ray that is being emitted out of the target surface would be having h nu where nu will be the frequency of the x ray nu will, will be the frequency and say h is nothing but the planck's constant all right so now if i am saying that this is kinetic energy this is kinetic energy and this is also an energy so can i compare these three with each other yes definitely so we are just going to do one thing we will say that this kinetic energy that means if a potential v is applied across the filament and target then kinetic energy at that time would be equals to the new max that means if maximum potential is applied at that time the current or the electron that would be flowing through it would be having the maximum number of electrons maximum the potential difference maximum the electrons that would be ejecting out of the cathode and so the intensity of x ray would be more if i am saying intensity of x ray is more that means the new would be maximum at that point frequency of the x ray will be maximum now i have got a relation that is ev equals to h new max and we are very much aware of one thing that nu is inversely proportional to lambda that means if frequency would be maximum lambda would be 
minimum. So if nu is max, so lambda would be minimum. All right. So if, if we have to find the value of frequency out of this formula, then we can say that nu max equals to E into capital V upon H. This is generated out of this formula. All right. Now, if I have to talk about the wavelength, that would be what? Nu equals to C by lambda. We know this formula. There is a relation between frequency and wavelength. So, that is why this is the relation. All right. So, we have said that we know that nu equals to c by lambda. So, what we are going to do? We will just put the value of this frequency into this equation. Suppose this is equation number 1 and this is equation number 2. So, just put equation number 2 into 1. Putting 2 in 1, I would be having C by lambda minimum equals to EV upon H. I have just written C by lambda in place of nu max. And when nu max, then lambda would be minimum. So that is why we have written C by lambda minimum. Now, I have to find the value of wavelength. So wavelength would be what? C into H upon EV. So, this is the value of wavelength of X-ray that would be generating and this is the value of the frequency that will be generated by the X-ray. So, this is the session we have started with that what will be the frequency and what will be the wavelength of the X-rays that are getting generated. This was important to tell you before beginning the spectra that is X-ray spectra because you are going to find such equation in that and then you will be saying that ma'am how does it come. So that is why I have just made you very clear in the beginning. So I would like you all to take a note of this, just note it down and we will be beginning with X-ray spectra, all right. Okay, after learning about this uh, frequency and wavelength, let me just note remove this because we are going to use this equation again. This is lambda maximum and this is lambda minimum and nu max. So this is the two formulas, all right. So first of all, we are just going to rub all and now we will begin with the spectra. So now it's X-ray spectra. Okay, so there are, I can say there is a story you can say behind this. What is the story? Not a basic story, but a basic concept behind the production of X-rays. And what will be the story? The story is that whenever a fast moving electron will hit the target. And in the previous session, I have made you very much clear that the target should be having high atomic number. Why? Because for the production of X-rays through a target, there should be characteristic property of the target that should be satisfied. Otherwise, there would be no X-rays. So first of all, if we are saying about spectra, then how does the spectra is originating? The basic story is that whenever the electron fast moving electron just penetrates the atom. At that time, what happens? It just goes near to the nuclear. Suppose this is my nucleus and this is any orbit. These are electrons. Okay? This yellow ones are the electrons that are revolving around this nucleus. 
Now, if I am talking about the fast moving electron that is coming to the target, if I am talking about the target, then the atom of the target I am talking about this time. X-ray is coming and X-ray is what? The fast moving electron. So, the fast moving electron when it will be coming, say this. So, at that time, it can happen that it would be very close to the nucleus. It will be closing from very close to the nucleus. And nucleus is positively charged particle. X-ray is having fast moving electrons that is negative charged particle. Then we know that positive and negative attracts each other. Alright. So due to the Coulomb's law, there will be the Coulomb's force of attraction between the X-rays and this nucleus because X-rays negatively charged electrons that means fast moving electrons and now if there is an attraction the speed uh, due to which it is coming the speed with which this electron is coming will be started retarding that means so slowly and slowly the speed would decrease because the electron was just getting attracted by this nucleus and it would happen that its speed would retard it. When the speed would retard it, at that point it can happen that motion of the electron will change its direction. It can happen that change in direction is possible. So this becomes the cause of X-rays. When the, I should not say that this is the X-ray that is coming. I just say that a fast moving electron is coming. When a fast moving electron is hitting the target, it can happen that fast moving electron will be crossing near to the nucleus. And the nucleus is since positively charged, so there would be the Coulomb's force of attraction between them. Due to this, the speed of fast moving electron will started retarding and due to this retardation, there will be the generation of X-rays and the photon that is getting released at that time, suppose this is the photon that would be getting released. In case of photoelectric effect, we have seen that a photon will fall on the surface. Just see this side. This was the case of photoelectric effect. Photon is falling over the surface. Suppose this is any metal surface. And by absorbing the energy, electron will start emitting out of the surface. So this was the concept of photoelectric surface. But in case of X-ray, I would say that suppose this is the metal surface or this is any target. In this case, when electron will fall over the surface, photons will be released. This is the case of X-ray. Now, since photon is released, so we cannot say that there will be one particular wavelength associated with it. In that case, this photon would be having number of wavelengths inside it. That would be composed of number of wavelengths. And if I have to find the discrete wavelengths, we can say that a spectrum is formed out of it. If I am saying that there is number of wavelengths present inside the photon or the x-ray you can say. So that means there will be the continuous spectrum. So this was the first part of the spectrum that is continuous spectrum. All right. So this was the first type of spectrum, x-ray spectra. If I talk about the second part, 
that means characteristic spectra this is just different from this continuous spectra all right so first of all we just see that this continuous spectra which will be having energy of ev that means kinetic energy it will be equals to half mv square and we know that we know this relation because this is the kinetic energy of the electron when some potential is applied across the college tube and half mv square is the mass of the x ray that is getting released and v is the velocity or you can say mass of the electron that is falling over the surface and this would be the velocity so this is the relation that you are already knowing about it this is just to show you that these are two kinetic energy of the electron all right now if i talk about the graph of continuous spectra just look at the 